If you're an actor working on Porsche's Is Brutus Sick monologue from Julius Caesar, then you are in the right place because I'm going to talk you through everything you need to know to get your monologue audition ready. So I'm going to talk through the context, what's actually going on. I'm going to talk about what the lines mean and I'm going to give you some of the tips and tricks, things where people go wrong and the acting choices that you can think about so your monologue is unique. So definitely stick around for that. That will be at the end of the video. So I'm going to jump first into a reading of the monologue. So we've got an idea of how it all comes together. Is Brutus sick? And is it physical to walk unbraced and suck up the humours of the dank morning? What is Brutus sick? And will he steal out of his wholesome bed to dare the vile contagion of the night and tempt the roomy and unpurged air to add unto his sickness? No, my Brutus, you have some sick offence within your mind, which by the right and virtue of my place I ought to know of, and upon my knees I charm you by my once commended beauty by all your vows of love and that great vow which did incorporate and make us one, that you unfold to me, yourself, your half, why you are heavy, and what men tonight have had resort to you, for here have been some six or seven who did hide their faces, even from darkness. Okay, so very quick context for this monologue. Please skip ahead if you already know the context or if you've just come from my other video, which talks about the monologue that's just happened prior in the scene. And that's worth looking at too, if you haven't seen that one. Basic context for this, Portia is Brutus's wife. Brutus is kind of the main character of this play in a way. And he has been a supporter of Caesar, one of the generals of Rome for a long time. But now there's this concern that Caesar is getting a big head, basically, and that that might lead him to want to be the emperor and become a tyrant, you know, basically a dictator. And there is some concern. And Brutus has had his mates come to him and say, you know what, I feel like maybe we should assassinate him, maybe. And Brutus has been like, oh, I don't know, like there's no evidence yet that Caesar's going to be a bad guy. I'll, I'll think about it. And he's been hanging out in the dark with his mate that's come to say, let's kill Caesar and Porsche's come out and said, Hey, hubs, what's going on? You've been acting really, really weird. So make sure that you read, I mean, ideally read the full play and watch a production, but definitely read this full scene because the lead up is important. Getting those given circumstances is important. You will get a sense of the stuff that's happened with the conspirators just before. And then also what Portia has already said to him, because that's really important to get a sense when you're doing this monologue, what has already transpired between them. And she's already kind of raised the subject of, hey dude, you're acting weird. Okay, so it's already been kind of broached and now she's furthering this argument. So keep that in mind as we go through. Okay, so let's talk about what everything means. Now, remember, I'm giving you my version to hopefully make it a little simpler for you, but it's really important that once you get a sense that you understand it, write it out in your own words because it will help you get more connected and it'll help your brain get that kind of clarity and it will test out any areas where you're not clear and you don't actually fully understand it. That's super important. It will uplevel your acting massively. So I've got a resource for that in the description. So please check that out. All right. So jumping into what does it mean? Is Brutus sick? Is he sick? So he's just said before, cause she's like, oi, what's going on? And he says, I'm not well in health. That's all, that's all. And so this is basically going, oh, you're sick, are you? Now we have to be a little careful because they didn't really use sarcasm back in those days. They didn't really have that as a thing. I feel like that happened in the nineties, <laughs> but in the 1990s, not the 1590s. So she is like pushing back like, oh, oh really? Are you sure? <laughs> that you're sick because this makes no sense. And then she'll go on to say like, why this makes no sense. And is it physical to walk unbraced and suck up the humors of the dank morning? So physical means like, is it good for your health? So, and is it good for you to be walking around like with your jacket unbuttoned? So he's basically like gone outside, he's just thrown his coat on or whatever. And he's not really, he's probably not even properly attired for like freezing cold morning and suck up the humors of the dank morning. So basically they kind of thought that, that it was like unhealthy 
for you to be outside in the cold, which sometimes we still think that today. So that's what she's saying is this makes no sense. So you can't possibly be sick because you wouldn't have wandered outside in the cold and not even put your jacket on. Something else is going on. What is Brutus sick? So she's again just been like, hey, come on, like, <laughs> don't BS me here. And will he steal out of his wholesome bed to dare the vile contagion of the night? So in each monologue that she has, she always has kind of an idea and then she furthers it and furthers it. And so what can be useful is to think about how he's reacting, right? Why is he not saying anything? Why is, why is she still talking? He's clearly kind of avoiding her question or he's just, you know, waving her off or whatever. So think about like, how would you, how, how do you imagine him reacting at each of these points? Because you are having to pull out another example every time because he's not responding. So another example, will he steal out of his wholesome bed, getting out of your nice <laughs> healthy bed, your nice warm bed, to dare the vile contagion of the night. So all of that's kind of, adding on this idea of, you know, you've gone outside, it's, it's, it's cold. You're probably going to get sick. You haven't even put your jacket on. Your bed was nice and warm. And then, and you're basically going out and be like, you know, make me sick air, cold air. And it's not just that it's going a little further with it and tempt the roomy and unpurged air to add to his sickness. It's useful to think about, even though this play is set in Rome, Shakespeare's plays were very much an English thing. And their experience was like foggy, unhealthy air in London, you know? So when she's saying roomy and unpurged air, she's basically saying like, it's unclean. It's going to make you cough. It's going to give you <laughs> diseases, probably because they did experience those things. So she's adding these very specific images. So in each one, you're going to really need to think about like, well, how is this image developing? So it doesn't just feel like a list. It has to feel like she's sort of twisting the knife a little bit. She's pulling him in with her argument. No, my Brutus, you have some sick offense within your mind. So fairly clear there, it's not possible that you're sick in the body. There's obviously something that's sick in your mind. Now, of course, she's not talking about you know, deep mental health things. She's just saying like, there's something in your mind that is making you feel not good. And she goes on to say, which by the right and virtue of my place, I ought to know of. And her place, she's referring to her self as his wife, you know, that she should have the right to know what's going on. As your wife, tell me what's going on. And upon my knees, I charm you by my once commended beauty. Now this stuff, she's like, <laughs> I'm basically begging you here. This stuff you need to remember, physicalize this stuff. You literally do what's in the text. If someone says upon my knees, you, you kneel down. Okay. So because it changes the way that you feel. And if you are doing a self tape, then you may want to just sort of sink your weight a little bit, even just kind of put one leg behind you, for example, because it will change how your body feels. And just like if you've ever done like power poses where you, you know, you sit like stand like this with your, your chest out and you feel better when you're kneeling, it does something to you where you feel it, it's not about lowering. Well, it kind of is about lowering herself, but not in a way that's shaming, but in a way that's respectful to just go, look, I'm, I'm, I'm begging you here. You know, like I, I respect you. I want you to, I want you to open, open up to me. And, and she's used the word, I charm you, which is, is a beautiful choice of words, right? She didn't say like, I beg you. She, and Shakespeare got rid of that, but he wrote, I charm you. She is looking for a way to connect with him, right? By my once commended beauty. This is she's kind of giving us a little bit of a dig at herself. Like uh, people used to say, I'm, I'm a beautiful lady. Let me win you over with my beauty. But it's, it's still pretty good, right? By all your vows of love, I'm, I'm begging you with my beautiful face, with everything that you have ever said to me about loving me. And that great vow, which didn't incorporate and make us one. Remember on our wedding day, you made a big vow. <laughs> We're one person now. That you unfold to me, yourself, your half. So this idea of them being one, she's saying like, I'm, I'm the other half of you. So unfold to me being like, reveal, reveal, open, unfold your heart and your, your worries to me. Cause I'm the other half of you. I'm, I'm your, I'm part of yourself. Why you are heavy and what men tonight have had resort to you. Heavy in Shakespeare means like serious or sad, basically what's bugging you. And also not just what's bugging you, but also reveal 
I saw those guys. It's really important when she gets that point, what men tonight have had resort to you? What, who did you let into our garden? Because I saw them. She is revealing for the first time in this scene, not just, I know something's going on with you, but also, I really know because I just literally saw people in our garden like five minutes ago. For here have been some six or seven who did hide their faces even from darkness. So that's why you need to read the part of the scene before where you see all the conspirators hanging out in this garden so you understand. And I'll give you some imagery of that. Go and look at some scenes on YouTube. That's totally fine. But if possible, watch a full production of it. And there are versions available online that are awesome. Okay, so that gives you an idea of what everything means. But please, again, write it out in your words for your own clarity. All right, let's talk about some of the things where people go wrong and some of the choices that you can make so it feels very unique for you. I mentioned in the previous Porsche monologue that often people make her too teary. Now, in this monologue, it's possible that people can sometimes make her too intense. Something to think about is where can you find the lightness in it? Because it's not going to make him open up if she's just attacking him all the time. She, at this point in the scene, she's maybe trying something else. She's tried to charm him and definitely using actioning or tactics is an interesting thing to experiment with this monologue because you can see her trying different things throughout the monologue of being like, Mm, no, and then maybe being a bit more playful. What is that journey for you as, as an actor, but also for the character? What is she going through? What is she thinking? She's tracking his reactions and going, okay, this is not really working. I need to try something else. So find the light and dark, find the shade. Make sure you're thinking about their relationship and the she does want the best for him ultimately. Something that can be really useful for you to make a choice around is how much Portia knows or thinks she knows about what's going on. There is not a lot of evidence in the text about whether she suspects exactly what's gonna happen. And obviously she's trying to get him to tell her, but you could decide that actually she's like 99% sure of that they're plotting assassination. Or maybe she's just like, oh, something weird is happening. You know, it could be anything. It could be something else. Maybe she suspected that, it, that it's something else going on with Caesar or with, with anybody, really. Make a choice around, okay, I think she's got this in her mind. She thinks this is going to happen. And then as part of the big picture, how does she feel about that? Like, if she thinks that Caesar is about to be assassinated, how does she feel about it? There is evidence... Portia as a real person being the daughter of a general her dad was anti-Caesar so she might actually be like mm, I'm pretty sure Caesar's going to be assassinated and man I'm going to back you dude this is where it's really important that you as much as possible try and flesh out the character that you think she is and that needs to be a balance of maybe do a little bit of research but keep in mind that Shakespeare's version of real people is and different from the real person but also we've only got really one scene to get to know her in this play so really dig into that scene make sure you're reading it multiple times to really see what's there that's important so you can start to make choices from what you see in the text yeah i also recommend actually just read the scene aloud read the other monologues that portia has in this scene because it's just going to give you so much more clarity about like how she's moving through decision making and what's actually happening to her and how she feels about brutus so look at the big picture okay i'm going to link those videos that i'm doing for the other monologues from portia on the screen now so you can just jump into either the next one or the one before to give you a bit more context of, of what happens in this scene and give you bigger con context on things in general. All right, so I hope that was helpful. Uh, let me know your thoughts, how you're going with all the monologue prep, and I'll see you in the next video.